It is Saturday morning, so I'm told. Apparently, apparently this is out of rock. Allegedly, this is out of rock. And I want to thank you and welcome you for joining. Thank you so much. This is every Saturday. We are joining here at this amazing monumental place uh, called Internet Town. Diana, good to see you. Um, that's the Twitch. Join us in the Twitch. This is made possible with Angel Spitz Patreon. Uh, thank you so much. If you've got a few bucks a month, like three bucks, send it to me and I'll keep crazy shit going. By the way, um, it just may be out of rock. Good. Uh, if you are on the Patreon, you get a copy of the free album. You get a digital copy of the, free, of the new album, um, which is going to be soon. And if you want to check that album out right now, it is kickstarting right now at this very second. Go. And it's really, 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 really heavy. I'm really proud of it. Um, 12 tracks. There might actually be 13 tracks. Um, more music you can listen to is on the Industrial Incisions playlist. It's there. It's on Spotify. Go and listen to a whole bunch of bloody awesome new music and you will love it supremely. On the subject of new music, non-stop amazing. This is MTV TV. That's MTV TV. And if you've got a track, send it to them and they're going to play it. And after this, we are going to... Um, a raid to MTV TV and my microphone is on. I'm going to make sure everyone else's microphone. Somebody had a question. Did. Did. Shoot me with that question of, of rock. So historically, my favorite audio interface ever was this Echo Audio Layla ah! or Darla or one yeah. of those. But oh my god, their quality control. I think I went through three FireWire interfaces on that thing. But anyway, the point was, it's just a plain panel with some meters on the front, and that's all I needed. It's all I wanted, TRRS, or um, yeah, TRS uh, connectors on the back. Connect it with the system, it's fine. Uh, it appears at the DAW with inputs and outputs for all the outboard gear, all the synthesizers, everything was fine. Um, more recently, I've been using a company that doesn't get named around here as a solution for a digital mixer, which is got all the outputs plus all of the DSP and mixing and busing architecture that you would find in a large format console. So I got rid of the large format console, don't need it anymore. That died. Um, my audio interface, main interface to the computer is currently just making screechy hash noise instead of audio, which has its own charms, but it's not exactly what I wanted to do with it. So it just came to mind, I've been shopping for audio interfaces, and it looks like right now you can spend 300 USD for as many mic pre's as you want, or $5,000 US for fewer mic pre's, but better. And they've gotten more expensive and less expensive at the same time. And I guess that's just a prompt to have everybody talk about what their preferences are for audio interfaces and or digital mixers they get from their outboard gear to their DAW. I highly recommend, um, I'm using a Foresight Scarlet and I've got the 18i20 versus 20i18. 18i20. And Funny, I just gave one of those to somebody the day before mine died on loan. So I, it's an awesome unit. So you you own one. I have one. Oh, I great. do own one, and somebody else has it right now. So oh, okay. sorry, <laughs> go on. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, it's difficult for me because I just do all rough mixes on my old Yamaha R1V. It's only twenty. It's twenty four bit, but forty eight k. It's not ninety six k. I don't connect stuff digitally because it's just too much of a pain in the cock. Um, it's just oh yeah, I'm gonna sync, and it doesn't. Um, although my favorite audio interface, Yamaha had this card that interfaced directly with the um, y y a card for your computer that directed uh, directly interface with the O1V. Um, beautiful, great, and it, it had like really basic compressors and it had the compressors and uh, reverbs and uh, effects units built in on its own DSP. This is like 15, 20 years ago. Um, if they had something similar like that for a bloody um, O1V96K, I'd, I'd look at that because I really want a 96K. But my thing is that I don't know if I'm, I am I really use it. I always go, oh, I, I, I just do rough mixes here, then I dump down track at a time straight into the Fostex analog. I don't care. Um, 
Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. Speaking of that, where's Mark? Um, that's what I do. Uh, uh, Scarlet, man. Phosphorite. It's fantastic. Anyone else? Yeah, I picked a winner with that one. Um, I will say right now, I'm plugged into a Scarlet 12i, whatever, the solo, the one that just has a mic input and an instrument input as my backup backup. Um, but the, uh, the, 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 the Scarlet line um, are really nice, really inexpensive, or, or at least priced like Motu and um, Zoom and Presonus and I guess Tascam and Roland. Everybody's got something in that line. And even I think SSL is and UAD are pushing down into that with some of their smaller form inter interfaces. But as far as I've gone through, I think three generations of the focus, right? Uh, I had a Firewire still runs. I have the Scarlet series of a couple of them. They still run. They're amazing. And the reason I wanted to bring back um, focus right into the discussion is I was having like some ground loop noise a couple of months ago. I mentioned it here and I chatted up tech support and there was a person on the other end with a troubleshooting routine, with knowledge of the product, with enthusiasm to help me fix it. And they spent maybe 45 minutes going through their um, decision tree or at least, you know, some, you know, a f formal thing that they had to do and then just chatted for the rest of the time about options and uh, amazing. Um, whereas Behringer, I got a sort of form email back about, yeah, you probably have to send that in for service. And there was no option for chat or any kind of like real support. So there are differences among them, not necessarily in the sound, uh, but in focus, right? Build quality is just beautiful too. metal cases and stuff. So, um, yeah. Um, I'll also say I, um, um, uh, my focus, right? Was misbehaving the other week. I just reinstalled the software. It was fine. While I was trying to figure out what the hell was going, I pulled my old Presonus firebox out, which I've had. I did Blood Death Ivory on that thing, like, fucking how many years ago was that? Um, still works like it's a brick. I've toured with that thing ridiculously. It's fantastic. Um, so, Vince, I see your hand. Yeah, um, M Audio has got a line of interfaces that are decent. I've got the the duo, so it's got a it's got two inputs and either one of them is it's got it's got the combo input for the XLR or standard like instrument cables. So it's uh that's pretty decent. I used that to replace my the they who should not shall not be named mixer actually because that mixer was super noisy. So I just got a dedicated audio interface and solved that problem. Um, but they've got a, the Air 19214. It's got like a bunch of ins and outs, and it's less than 400 bucks. So it's not bad for... Uh, it's got a big knob on it, too, which is always nice. So... Go on, Vince. I was all I was going to suggest that uh, M Audio's got really affordable audio interfaces that are decent. The Crystal preamp, whatever, whatever their like trademarked preamp is that's in it is really nice. It's clean. Awesome, man. I've heard really good stuff about this stuff, and like a lot of the M Audio stuff I've ever had, just keeps going. So it's. Really cheap, really good, pretty damn sturdy. Thanks, man. Alex! So, I, I have only limited six, uh, experience, but what I have... Um, first of all, what I have read is that in recent years, the difference between the cheap or the more affordable or midsection and the high tier has decreased, decreased, decreased over the years. Um, I think that's what the people in the music magazines write. Uh, personally, my first audio interface was one by Mackie, and I think it was my favorite so far. Um, unfortunately, they dropped support for Mac, newer Mac versions, I think. Um, yeah, but this was an Onyx. 
uh, something something and it sounded great. After that I had like a mixer by Presonus which was like an analog mixer with like an audio interface with it. That sounded okay but I didn't like that it colored the sound in a way. I think it would sound great with jazz or something but it's not the sound I want for industrial or something. It make, made everyone, everything sound a bit sweeter. Uh, yeah, and um, unfortunately that has a failure and I need to fix that. And currently I have a small mixer by the company who shall not be named. Um, yeah, and I think if I were to buy an audio interface now, I probably would choose an Autoria one because they seem to have like a good mixture of good sound and features. And also what always uh, was interesting to me were the universal, universal audio um, ones where you can change the, the characteristic of the uh, microphone preamps. But unfortunately they are out of my range and I think the um, DSP based uh, universal audio stuff is about to phase out. So at least I feel so. I would be too scared to buy it right now. Huh, crazy, thank you man. Um, Ivan. What you got? Um, it's probably like everybody, you know, I've, I've got a, a, a 2i2 because, you know, into everyone's life will a 2i2 will arrive. You know, like, I don't know what it's... Oh, 2 in, 2 out. Uh, the 2i2, the, the, the red... Um, I don't know. Focus right. Uh, yeah, the focus right. Right, right. You know, it, it, I like it. It's, it, uh, it, it travels well. And because it is built, it is built well. So you know, like, like there's, it's got that going for it. Um, for my for my desktop setup, you know, here at home, right now I'm running a Audio Fuse Studio because it had more inputs and outputs, which I really desperately wanted at that time. Also, it's got ADAT, which I really wanted at that time. Um, I don't use the ADAT that often, but when you know, when when, I, when it's set up, uh, you know, it's nice to have because. Uh, you know, like all of the um, channels from um, Eurorack come in via ADAT then, so I can keep them separate and do all the mixing over in the DAW, which makes life it makes life easier. Uh, these days, if I were to buy a new audio interface, I'm fairly certain, you know, it would either say, you know, Motu or uh, universal audio on it. Um, <clears throat> lots of lots of I, I don't know. I mean, like lots of like the, the more I/O you have, the more I/O you're going to discover you need. I, it's the only way to describe it. I, you know, any any unused I/O you've got on your audio interface will get used. You know, because it it's the same as like computing storage. Cool. Um, I, I've been a fairly big fan of the idea of uh, Motu. Um, the uh, was it the which model? It is uh, the Ultralight AVB because it's got the AVB networking, and I really want to switch the stuff going on when I get up to the third floor. With I want I want I want the audio to move around on AVB just because, they, like, it just seems like it would be potentially less of a pain. You know, and you just use their switch and it, you know makes that probably any problems go away. Also, you know, like modern Macs can speak A V B right over the Ethernet port, which is excellent because now now it's essentially, you know, you could turn turn any Mac into just like a recording device and you know, record all your stems, you know, for practice as individual stems. Double bonus. Um, you know, it makes them infinitely more useful. Awesome. Thanks. Um, did you want to continue with anything else on that or I'll throw it to the res. What you got, Resi? Ivan, you mentioned Motu and that's one of the ones I'm looking at. I'm sort of looking at their pro line that's just the IO, but it bumps the price up. I was hoping to do like 16 channels for under a thousand bucks, but I'm looking at maybe doing 32 channels for twice that. I'm not even sure at this point, still shopping, window shopping. But if anybody's actually touched one of the um, Motu things and used their software, I was a little bit worried about the web-based 
based admin or mixer function, um, having to do that in a web browser rather than in a native app. So maybe somebody's actually checked that out. And I th thought it was interesting that we get to decide um, who has better software more than um, who has better sound. Like Alex was saying, the, the mic pre's might vary a little bit, but if you're just using it for line level inputs and they're clean, it's like really minimal differences, if any, they should null for all intents and purposes, all practical purposes, any interfaces that we can buy that aren't on sort by price, you know, the absolute cheapest, and they made up a name just to get onto Amazon shop. Like they'll all probably have clean, usable audio in, no distortion, or something below 144, negative 144 dB that you'll never detect like in the dither. Um, so th there's a, a wealth of options. I'm probably going to waste another couple of weeks just getting refamiliarizing with, with what's out there rather than quickly getting something. Awesome. Thanks, man. Um, I actually wanted to talk about something else, but uh, I'm going to... Uh, Alex, did you want to throw in? Yes, one thing to consider if... Um... CV and gate is something in within your music world that you could choose an audio interface which is DC coupled, so you can send C, CV out of your audio interface and uh, modulate your synthesizers and um, have much more um, a way to m maybe get more out of your gear. Absolutely. And, and such. Yeah, the Motu stuff is DC coupled. That's actually a really great thing about buying old um, audio interfaces and stuff is you buy it for that reason um, and then you get the software to talk to it so it, they become a massive CV gate dooby doo Ivan what you got yeah the uh, the, the, the motus like uh, are set up to do that out of the box you don't have to you know go find extra software which is nice wow and like you know like I think in the last really in just the last couple of years um, you know, audio interfaces have gone from being pretty, you know, grab them off the shelf to now you have to research to figure out what features you want and which, which you know, software you want to deal with because you're going to be dealing with software now. And, um, you know, and the, the, the whole thing. Um, there's a, there's a, a mixer, I'm trying to remember the name, that is actually pretty good. It uh, makes it. Yeah, you know, if you, this is another one. If you need a lot of I.O., was it that? I think it's the Mackie. I think Alex has got it. What's going There's on, There's one from Log. There's one from um, uh, Tuscom. Tascam, that's yes. Yeah. Because <clears throat> Prezonus has some. Yeah, Tascam's got a very nice like twenty four port or twenty four channel, um, and it's got a built in recorder, so you know you can record your stems straight to it, and, and then just transfer them off later, or, or move your memory card. And, yeah, and those are those are good features. Wow. All right, cool, man. Thank you. Uh, Raz. Yeah, I'll just put a cap on it by saying the, the last um, large format multi-channel uh, console I had was the Mackie 328, and I really loved it. Took up a whole lot of space and was very expensive, and the electrical bill was silly. Um, I was able to sell it and move to just, you know, rack I.O. without um, worrying about a mixer. But there are a lot right now of... 24 fader work surface slash digital mixer slash audio interfaces kind of things between Tascam and Presonus and um, well, a lot of them anyway. So th there are some options there too, but it's crazy. Like thinking about having a full sized fader dedicated to every piano and synthesizer in the place that I touch like once a month to move it a little bit is just, I can't, I can't justify it. It's like pixels are cheap. Ha. Screen real estate is repurposable. So. <laughs> That's funny. Like I um I have this secret fantasy about getting a sound big soundcraft desk. You know, you can pick them up for nothing now, like a thirty two track wankerage. 
But, you know, you are so right that just the way I work and everything, it's like, um, or, you know, get like a, a 96K O1V, O2R, I should say, a big Yamaha with a whole bunch of faders. Um, but like you say, it's, it's all about that real estate, man. Ivan, your hand's still up. Did you want to talk some more or should I throw it to Mr. Alex? Alex, we've lost Ivan. The floor yeah, is yours. Probably is um, disconnected or something. Um, for me, it's really a good thing to have a big fader because sometimes I make a noise that's really loud and I really like having the possibility to just grab the knob or grab the fader and drag it down because um, sometimes you need that to protect your ears, especially if you plug things in in unexpected ways, which I sometimes do. All about those unexpected ways. Um, uh, to be fair, you only need a master fader for that. Yes. Um, okay, I wanted to talk about the marathon. Um, I wanted to talk about the marathon, but, you know, in that we might once again merge into that fantastic nebula of the beauty of mistakes and having, you know, a studio set up so that you can have mistakes. Um, tell you what, I, let's get to the marathon. I wanted to talk, I'm bringing up the marathon because um, I've just, I'm almost through the, the music marathon of finish, uh, finishing a damn album, which is harrowing. Um, and a very close friend, uh, Disraeli and Melody from uh, Queen of the Static Opera are currently doing their marathon. Um, and those guys are just ruined because it's such a slog doing an album. Um, I, I, I would like to talk about that, but, you know... Tell you what, fuck it. Let's just talk about that briefly, and, and maybe we'll we'll get into the the studio thing as well. Um, I bring it up because it's like it's very important that when you're making an album, you realize that you get to a point where you go, "I hate everything I do. I hate myself. I hate my music. I have no talent. I'm wasting my time. I should just get a real job. I should give up right now." And if you go through that. You need to put a big thing on the wall to remind yourself that that's really um, that's a, a, a signpost. That means you're actually going in the right direction because that point of exhaustion is normal. And don't push away from it. And you know you'll even go through this in in, in the um, in, 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 with each song where you're in a ball on the floor, fetal position, going this sucks. I I hate this. That's okay. Um, you've just got to keep going. Um, it, it is a part of the creative process. Um, my advice with the marathon is my mate Steve, who's my Jedi master in Australia, has a saying which is, if in doubt, go out. Um, go out to a club, wear ear, ear, earplugs. You, you need to keep your ears fresh. Um... You must wear earplugs. Like, game changer. You've got to wear earplugs. You can't... Because the club's going to tire your ears out really quickly. Um, hang out with people. Dance. Because dancing's important. Physical exercise, man. Talk to people. Get drunk. Don't get drunk. Whatever. But you've got to get out. And you've got to be around other people in a different room that doesn't look like this room. We're a place where your voice doesn't have the same fucking acoustics as it's bouncing off the walls because that subtly drives you insane. It's going to recharge your batteries. Um, and during the album process, do it once a week. Um, if there's a cafe or something nearby, walk to it and buy a coffee or a decaf or an orange juice every two or three days. And, and yes, yeah, sure, it costs money and everyone's really, really poor. I, I get that. But these tiny expenses are helping you get this thing done. Because I cannot stress it enough. Albums are not easy things to make. And you have to have a focus that is like pig-headed. Um, you have to have one of those focuses that you can't negotiate with. That it's like stubborn. 
because you've got to get it done. You have a direction. Don't flip-flop. Make a note. This song sounds fine. Don't fuck with it. And if it gets cluttered, just take everything else except the vocals, the bass, and the drums and start there again. Get a friend who you trust. But when you're running a marathon, you get exhausted. I remember I heard an interview with the Australian um, marathon runner, Robert De Costella in the 80s. And I was like only starting out on this. And he said that in the last, in, in the, you, you start off rough, you find your pace. Um, around about halfway through, you, you realize that you're only halfway through. Then when it gets to the two-thirds, the five-eighth golden proportion market of it, you start getting exhausted. And he was saying how marathon runners, you know, your mucus is coming out, diarrhea is happening, it's it's messy. Um, but the last 20% of that is sheer will. You've got to get it done. You've got to keep going. I guess that's the... Um, uh, hey, um, thanks, Randall. Good to see you, Spark Chamber. Um, uh, you just got to keep going. Because so many people go, this is shit, I hate it, it's crap, it doesn't work anymore, give up. Don't fucking give up. Even better, give me your address. And if you give up, what am I going to send you in the mail? I think it was a shit. It was a poo. I will poo in a snaplock bag and I'll send it to you in a mail. Maybe even it might be a raccoon poo as well. Or a skunk poo. And I will send it to you in the mail. And I'll say on it that it's cake. <laughs> or gold. It is a gold nugget. That's right. Carl's advice. If anybody else wants to jump in on the slog, let me know. Otherwise, I want to talk about having a studio that welcomes chaos even away from your door does anybody want to talk about the slog or do we want to change subject what's going on i see the hand of vince you're muted okay i'll talk i hear your voice um the uh i think that a kind of a, a surprisingly large portion of the slog is um, we make quite the mess while we're making the music and, you know, like managing the, like the mess, you know, like the stems and notes and, and all of that stuff do really become, you can derail you rather quickly. I mean, like I'm, I'm trying to reorganize all of the, the Ableton projects from like the last four years. And oh yeah, 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 you, 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 you know, because it is a, it's a damn mess. And yeah, you know, I mean, the good news is it's giving me a chance to go through, you know, the, the pandemic days. And it turns out I have there's a whole lot of gold in there, you know. Like I, I, we, I've got albums worth of, of really good stuff just just needs to be finished. And you know, now that I'm getting organized, I, I know what stuff is in the needs to be finished directory, and I know what stuff is in the we're currently working on directory and you know like like it, it, it's making a giant difference um there so and yeah and and then then you know do get away like getting away i think is a great idea like just you know step away from it because it's gonna sound different when you get back um maybe it'll sound better maybe it'll sound worse you'll find out when you get there um either one of them's good because you've learned something in either on either side of the coin um and then um was the last thing I had. I had an, one more idea. Uh, maybe I didn't. Uh, I think I'm good. I'd like to reply to that. You brought up some really good points there, um, and um, you know you, you normally do. It's the only reason we keep you around. It's the smoking, the drinking, and the and the and the good thoughts. You, you are our Hunter S. Thompson of industrial music. Um, uh, it, it's really interesting when you talk about the mess. And, and this is kind of like starting to ease in really nicely to, to the next thing, which is um, it's really important to clean as you go. But you can't let cleaning get in the way of putting that idea down. No, it's like working in a kitchen. Yes, it is. 
I you like know, that a lot. Because in the kitchen, you have to keep cleaning as you go. It at you know, more importantly, you have to remain organized as you go. Um, and and if you do it a little bit at a time, it stays that way instead of spiraling into a nightmare. Man, that is the truth, and I really thank you for it. Um, Vince, what you got? I have a little bit different approach to managing my files and, and to a certain extent, the mess. Um, fi files, files come and go. Project files, at least. My sample library stay. And I have, I have a small in-progress folder, and I have masters. And other than that, whatever happens, happens with the project files in the meantime. Because in order to get it, to, to, in order for someone else to work with it, I've got to provide the stems anyway. So if I have the original stems somewhere amongst all the project files, I don't need the project file to work from from there because I can just put the original files back in. So I've kind of just got a mess of sample libraries. And somewhere in there is some of my stuff. And I've got a couple of dedicated spots where I put my stuff. But like mostly, I just have bundles of sounds and then I've got a couple of projects I'm working on now and whatever I've already done and the rest of it gets tossed honestly somewhere along the line like when I change machines my project files no longer work because that drive doesn't exist anymore so that project file doesn't have access to those files because that drive is in another machine and the new drive is never organized exactly the same because there's usually two or three operating systems in between my upgrades. So I don't have the option to direct things exactly the same. So when I reinstall my software, it can't find anything without me individually going into every single project file and telling it to find these files in whatever directory they're in now to get it to reload them. So rather than deal with that and, you know, spend five to ten minutes on every track going through each individual sample to figure out where it is in the new machine, I keep my sample libraries and my stems and work in progress files. I'm not even sure where they go most of the time. They, they end up where they end up. Sometimes they get deleted because I forget what that was. And it's just a string of numbers because it was an autosave. So it just gets chucked with the rest of it but yeah uh minimizing your 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 own mess sometimes means letting go of old files yeah or things yeah I, uh, I used to work in the video game industry and the reason that you never give up any of the 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 original the, the original or the originizing data the stuff that you've worked with as you go along is because later on when somebody tries to sue you, you can be like, no, no, here's here's the starting point. Here's every single change that's happened along the way. And here's the result. And here is when that starting point was because uh, yeah, I, worked, I worked for Midway and, and like we put out a game and legal was immediately getting pinged with with lawsuits because everybody in their you know, like grandmother thought that they had actually written the game instead. Um, This is interesting. I. I'm sorry, uh, Vince. Go on. Yeah, I don't. I don't tend to have that issue because, like, all my everything I use is either definitely already cleared before I get it. Like, I purchased it with a royalty-free license, and, or I made it myself. So, like, I have the original file that I made and the finished product. So, I don't. I don't have any. Any, you get the original, which is, is you know, yeah. I think in this world it would say... I may not have every thing. step in between, but I have the finished product, product and I have the beginning of it. So I can prove where it came from and when the product was finished so nobody else can claim it. they did it first. Okay, cool. All um, All right, groovy. And... I'm set up to use a, a, a OneDrive as my back end for, for every everything. Um, and the, the advantage of that is uh, I can jump from machine to machine and the format of, of where data is going to be found never changes, um, which has made it possible for me. I, I write on my desktop 
and go to practice with my notebook and I just need to sync it before I leave. I would do precisely that. However, I do not have the luxury of an income that allows me to afford more cloud storage. So I have a very limited amount of cloud storage. What I have is three cloud accounts. I've got OneDrive and Google Drive and another one that I can't remember what it is now, but I know I have another one somewhere that have all got like four or five gigs available. And that's all I've got. So when I'm done with a project, I've got to get everything to a physical storage device to be able to make sure I've got it because I, I can't I can't afford more storage otherwise. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, there's some stuff in there I want to talk about as well. But first, here's Raz. I'm still vibing with your marathon metaphor and... Maybe I'm getting in my own way with this type of thinking, but where it breaks down for me, help, is the marathon has a preset course. The marathon has a organized start time. The marathon has a finish line that everybody agrees on. And uh, yeah, what do you do about those things, man? Okay. Um. Uh, hold on, it, it, uh, um, oh wow, man, my brain is firing right now. Um, see, if you're working with a band, it's difficult. I'm going to say, you know, was it fucking, um, who's the man? Yeah, no, I mean, who's that guy? I mean, fucking Black Sabbath. Oh, Ozzy. Ozzy once said, that was a very, thank you very much. Um, hey, Ozzy. Ozzy once said, and then I want to really... Ozzy once said that every band is a perfect democracy ruled by a dictator. And I absolutely fucking agree. Before I go any further, I just want to share something super funny that happened this week. I posted an image of me throwing a water bottle downstairs. I don't know if anybody saw that. It was on Instagram some other places. Um, and that is actually the backbone to the track called Do The Spin. And the interesting thing about throwing something with gravity is that it's bound to hit on certain beats. That boom, 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 it's, it's going to hit beats because of the physics of gravity. And if, if it's out just a tiny bit, then that's fucking groove. Because gravity is... Gra the, the curve of gravity suggests... Um, it suggests a, a slight groove, and it suggests things are going to fall on the beat. So my mate AJ from, um, and I don't know if you saw this from Echo House, said that sounds like the Tom Sampleter in the air tonight by Phil Collins. If you get a chance, go on Angel Spitz Instagram because he then got it. He got the like the the two bars preceding, but um but um but um but um, in in, in and he stuck the the uh, the sample uh, the the recording of the 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 bottle falling down the stairs. It's like, fuck man, <laughs> it's in the air tonight. Um, I, I just totally lost my shit. The interesting thing about throwing a bottle down the stairs is that you get a fantastic slap, slap back reverb. Every stairwell is the best reverb f for drums. I mean, come on, man. Led Zeppelin. Anyway, um, back to, sorry, uh, back to deadlines and back to that marathon. That's why I have, um... Uh, notepads and Excel files and all of that shit because um, ultimately it's project management and yep it's a different course and yes 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 to everything you said I mean technically when did the album start and for me the album ends the the album part of the album ends when the masters come back then it goes into production and mode then it goes into PR mode um the timeline that I have, which is on the internet, which I can't go to because my life is crap and my data is crap, um, it, sp it stipulates these things. How much of it have you written? How much of it have you arranged? And all that sort of shit. You know what? I'm, um, I'm going to mute my mic while I find that, and then I'm going to put that up there if I can find that. It's a really helpful thing if I have it. Um, that's my thoughts. I'm going to throw this to Vince now. Hey, ho. Okay. Um...
marathon is a good metaphor, but here's the thing. You have to be in charge of your, your running and your training. If you're working with a band and you're the producer for their project, they need to stick to the producer's schedule to be able to get the project out on time. So you need to write the map and you need to give that map to everyone else involved. So they know when their things need to be done so you can get your things done on time. So you reached your desired set finish line at the appropriate time or by the deadline. I think if you, if you, yeah, you got, you got to have everybody involved to a certain extent, but you do have to be the one in charge of shit. Like, like Zook said, you know, it's run a democracy run by a dictator. Everybody's got their part, their equal parts to do, but there has to be somebody keeping track of the schedule. Because especially with most creative type people, I know, I know I have this problem with my youngest child. Like we both are always doing something with our brain that involves creating something. And so neither one of us can keep a schedule like i i if i don't wake that kid up they won't get up till 5 p.m it doesn't matter when they go to bed like somebody has to somebody has to be there to be like nah you got to be doing this now so if you're working with a band and you're trying to keep a production schedule for something that you're responsible for getting out on time you need to be the one that says nah this is what's got to be done now and like kind of stay on top of them a little bit probably uh, if it's just you that that becomes more unfortunate because then you're in a position like me where you're in charge of yourself and this guy's real lax with the rules. <laughs> yeah, well that comes down to um, okay. So I just put the um, creative time management in there, Randall. You are familiar with that. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. All right, you have to be disciplined. This is a this is a martial art. And a part of martial art is getting up at 5 a.m. and doing uh, push-ups on your, on your knuckles. And you may interpret that in your music however you choose, but you must be disciplined. If you are not a disciplined artist, you're going to fail. Um, I've met so many artists who are like, oh, just I'm going to get a manager, I'm going to do this. And it's like, no, nah, you know. Um, you have to learn discipline. And luckily, you can learn discipline. And if you do it right, it only takes you 30 days. And it's as simple as, yes, it does. It takes you 30 days to actually train your brain to a habit. You put a, th a piece of paper on the wall and it says between this hours, I will be doing this. Or what I used to call church. No matter what you were doing, you must do this thing. And if it's, oh, my day's too chaotic and crazy, then get up earlier. And if that's a problem, go to sleep earlier and stop watching dumb shit on the television so that you can go to bed earlier. And if you can't sleep, eat pasta. That'll help you sleep. Um, and after a few days of you getting up early, you will start going to bed early. Between 5 and 6 a.m. before the cats and everybody else wakes up. And being told to get up earlier is as... Um, rotten is being told to get a job which somebody told me recently and I didn't really respond to it very well I told them I'd kick them in the nuts um, so uh, and you're welcome to kick me in the nuts at 4am but it means you have to get up at 4am um, so yeah there you go Carl's a bastard yeah I'm the drill sergeant um, Ivan oh sorry Alex my hand's still up I should take my hand down I'm the king of not getting things done, but whenever I got things done, it was with a deadline and accountability. Because if I just put deadlines up for myself, I don't follow them. They they just go right by them. I I need the accountability. So uh, what I've thought for myself is maybe putting up um, on Bandcamp an album with like six tracks or so, and saying okay until i don't know in, in in three months i will have these filled and it will be released and it's pay what you want i think that would probably for myself be the best strategy so yeah for myself it's really accountability and deadlines but everyone works a bit different but if there's like a time um if if if, if there's like uh, less and less time like the the, the self-critical parts in my brain turns off 
and to just do whatever is needed to finish the thing. And usually it isn't that bad. It's, uh, it's better than I would have anticipated, usually. For sure, man. Thank you. <clears throat> Ivan. I go running with ADHD scissors. scissors. What does that mean? I, there's, there, I, I, habits don't work for me. <laughs> I go running with ADHD scissors. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Habits don't work for me. All right. Because like th that's just something for me to not do. Literally, like, the, and and as soon as I think that I've I've nailed it and it's good, uh. Hyperfocus will take that away from from me to, to be used somewhere else. <laughs> All right. I, I see. Uh, did you want to continue on that? Because Rosie's wave, waving his hands. Oh, no. He, he... I, I, can, I can absolutely relate. As you just brought that back around, the, um, the idea of being able to put something aside, knowing it's done, and then coming back to it a few months later and noticing oh, I can get into this to fix this. I can change this. This is going to take a, I got to get uh, my calluses back up so that this baseline will really groove. It'll be so much better. Easy to slip into that. That is very hard to fight against in establishing a finish line and, a, you know, an actual project timeline that has a completion. Man, I get it. Un undiagnosed, untreated ADHD, but uh, nonetheless, I, I, yeah. I have a cure for this, but first, thank you very much. Here's Vince. Um, here's the thing about ADHD. If you actually have severe ADHD, habits do not form. Your brain actually lacks the neuro function to form habits. You can't. You have to have a constant reminder. You have to, discipline works differently for those of us who have ADHD. It's not about forming a habit. It's not about sticking to a schedule until it becomes your routine because routines don't happen in your brain. It doesn't work that way. You have to constantly force yourself to do the thing. It is a constant exhaustive effort. Like every time I brush my teeth, every time I take a shower, every time I do anything, it's something I have to put forth a physical and mental effort to do because there is no such thing as habits. I don't have them. They don't exist. So that's, Scheduling and getting things done on time, making that a habit, making creative things a habit even, is, is nearly completely impossible if you are not constantly on top of it. So yes, for most people, the church concept, the setting aside the time, the having a schedule for it works. However, for certain levels of neurodivergence, you're going to have to stay on top of yourself harder than that, and it's going to get exhausting but you're going to have to just keep reminding yourself that the output is worth the input or you'll never get it done thank you very much and i really appreciate the um science behind what you said razi your hand's still up i just wanted to say that was an unbelievably well said um vince and uh relatable and could you just talk a little bit more about frameworks that you use to work to, to do the reminding for the things that are going to form habits. I mean, I, I, I've tried calendars and, and not formed habits on the day that was supposed to be vocal lessons, quote unquote, and bass lessons and time of day that was supposed to be studio time. All of those things evaporate immediately. What's your, what's your trick? I, I use a really irritating alarm on my phone. My wife hates it. It's the only way I wake up in the morning. Hey, I, have, I have an 80s phone sound that goes off on my phone anytime it's something important. That's the noise it makes, and it makes everyone else around me crazy. But it reminds me I have to do a thing now, or I wouldn't be this angry. Like, that's, that's how it works. Thank you. Have you. To, you have to set yourself a reminder that you can't ignore. Okay. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate everybody's um, input here. So um, the beautiful irony of this is that almost every single person that makes music or gets well down the path of making music or art in general is neurologically divergent. Um, so 
these things that I have, when you look at them, they are made for people, and I'm going to use us, like us. Um, you summed it up when you said get an alarm. I have two alarms, one alarm that goes off at four, actually three, four alarms. I have a cat that wakes me at 4 a.m. I have an alarm that goes off at 4.30. I have another alarm that goes off at five, five o'clock, and then I have an angry wife. Turn off your damn alarm. So, um, so I'm lucky like that, that without that, I would get up at 7.30, 8 o'clock. Then I would sit in a chair and then I would scroll through YouTube videos about synthesizers and aliens. That's what I do naturally. That's what my brain naturally wants to do. Doesn't want to work. Doesn't want to do any of this shit. Because this shit's fucking stressful and it, it freaks my brain out. Um, but I can't get a job because I'm such a head case or neurological diversion person as we have to say these days. So... All of the stuff that I have done is based for people like me. Because people like me, like us, have a lot of trouble doing this shit. You know, you are right in saying that um, it's difficult to make habits. Around this room right now, I have got one, two, three pieces of paper telling me what to do at any point of the day. Because I always get to every 20 minutes of the day going, what am I supposed to be doing? I don't know. Oh, new gear. Oh, aliens. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh, they found an alien in Europe, in um, Rio. Oh. Um, oh, 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 pretty shiny. Oh, pretty shiny. Um, so I'm always um, uh, are working at these things. This is why my computer, my main computer, is not on the internet. When I'm working on music, it is uh, its own computer. It's off the internet. And there are so many advantages with that. I don't have viral checking software. I don't have all of this crap. I don't have endless updates. I don't have blah, blah, blah. I can't really update software because software these days wants to check with the internet. Um, there's a whole bunch of things I don't update anymore because internet. Um, I put my phone over there because I will pick it up and I will start scrolling like I don't think. Pick it up, scroll. 20 minutes later, ooh. I did this fun thing where I um, leave the, the track playing if I find myself scrolling and then when I find stop, I look at it and go, oh cool, I only wasted three minutes there because my brain just has no concept of time. Um, so um, I don't want to sound like, well, if it works for me, it should work for you too. Um, I, I don't want it to sound like what, I, what I'm what um, uh, recommending that you do is try and find out um, how, what things you can be doing. Having hourglasses. Have, and I'll tell you, man, half of these things that I've got at 8 o'clock in the morning, you need to be doing this. I'll look at them for a week. Then I don't look at them anymore. Um... So, I, I understand, I get it, um, but what I, the really important thing is that we're not accountants, um, so that, you know, I don't want it to come across that, although, man, I got to tell you, I, I am trying to run this as much as I can like a business, like, Carl, who sits down and writes these things, is trying to be Carl project manager, because I don't have a project manager, um, and the, 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 the real pain in the, the ass is that if I don't project manage myself, it ain't going to get done. And that's the discipline of, um, I've got to fucking do this shit. I've got to do this shit. And, and the best stuff I've ever done, no money. Um, yeah, it's the fucking James Webb telescope as well. Thanks, Randall. Um, if it's not, I have no money, I have no time, um, it's got to be done right now. Uh, and that's, see, it's funny that you talk about the James Webb Telescope because the universe basically wants you to shine, then blow up. And be a pretty nebula when you blow up, then form into a new cloud and butter, butter, butter. Ultimately, what the universe wants you to do is is find that level of nothingness for everything to come to that's what the universe wants. 
that's what your brain wants because your brain is a reflection of the universe um but the will of human and to err and to be human wants you to do something else it wants you to do something greater it wants you to strive which is a beautiful galactic irony it's like rain on your wedding day a free ride where you've already paid some good advice that you just can't take and then the other line that i've never understood um so i'm going to shut up now and i'm going to throw this to alex So I struggle with this a lot and usually I either spend the whole night on something or not no time at all. Um, what helped me is to just um, be off the internet for a certain amount of time in the day. For example, I re rewired my hi-fi setup and I made a tape for that occasion just to test out things and I got into habit to just listen to, to the tape and not listen to music on my computer and it helped me so much to get things done because I wasn't like checking news and YouTube videos and so on. Uh, so that is one thing and the other thing that I have tried a bit but not to uh, enough extent is um, um, Diana suggested an app called T Timo, Timo, it's mm. called T-I-I-M-O and it's like a calendar but it sends you a notification for everything that uh, is uh, to be done the next time and you can rearrange stuff for the day and I wanted to try that out a bit more. It's subscription based but there is a free tier so you have like less function but the basic stuff is still there. Yeah, Timo. Uh, that's double I-M-O. Um, that's awesome. I'm gonna put this down here. That might help. Um, yeah, and, and uh, I guess what I'm trying to say here is um, somebody in your influence of your project management has to be a pain in the ass or shit ain't gonna get done um, and you have a decision to make and it, it might take you forever oh that was the other thing is that you know Rezzy you brought up the really good point about I can redo that song well the really good um, uh, answer to, to, to redoing that song the really good solution to that is get a mastering person and make sure they're expensive and pay them a fuckload of money to seal that damn track shut. And that's another reason I love Dave Walker. Not only is the guy a brilliant mastering guy, but he's bloody expensive. His, what he gives me, I'm happy with. In fact, I think he's actually extremely economical considering the job he does. And I'm one poor little bloke. I can't fucking afford it. But my thing is, if I don't if I don't nail that thing shut, I can just go in and say, oh yeah, I can just run it through Isotope again, or I can just get da 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 da, you know. Sorry man, it's nailed shut. It's done. And if you're gonna do something else, then it's gonna be a different version or a different remix. Um that, as you will notice, is a process. That is a safeguard that I've got in place for me to go, oh, well, it's done. Got to give away because it's done. That T-shirt is printed. Done. Um, so, yeah, this is good. Um, hold on. Just poke me about uh, on the Discord. I can probably help you with the respect of accountability. Uh, I was going to do that with a friend a while back, but they need it. And da -da 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 -da. Thanks, Mark. Um, Ivan? Tell me I'm wrong. I don't think you're wrong. Um, I think also, you know, like for me at least, uh, gamifying the, the activity that needs to get done, turn it into a game so that it, it becomes fun. Um, uh, also, you know, find ways to add novelty to it so that it's always interesting. Um, those rooms work really well for me. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, those really primarily. Can I ask you a question, Ivan? And in mm. fact, this is an open. Oh, like Rosie, I see your hand. Um, um, how much of your other work experience can you apply to the process of creating music? The reason I ask is that 
I learned about process management by doing music for Microsoft, by doing sound design for EA Sports, and then working for the Department of Health, uh, doing translations, which was the worst job I've ever had, but it was the most beneficial. I help people and I learn about managing people. If you think managing people is like musicians is hard, you should try translators. Translators are, oh my God. Oh my God. They, they, they exist on a different plane. Like they're just, um, and I learned so much about from other jobs so that's my that that's kind of like a part b question what from your day job or from your life experience can you put and share with the, therefore share with the group and i throw that open to everybody else i shut up now i mean go yeah no i mean um uh you know, learn project management um <clears throat> you know in the tech field is designed you know primarily what, what's going on there these days is mostly designed to herd neurodivergent cats into getting a project completed and you know usually it's a lot of neurodivergent cats because the tech industry much like the music industry you know we you know it's easy to find musicians in in software dev circles as we attract the same people and we all like to hang out together reminds me of a joke what do you call a building full of people with autism microsoft NASA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and those motherfuckers put rockets on the moon. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, also Microsoft. Yeah, totally. Also fucking EMI. Um, but nevertheless, this is really, this is an interesting subject. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Because we're, um, and I thank everybody for their input, because we're really sort of like, this is project management for, for neurodivergence. This is very interesting. Ivan, I shut you off. Please keep going. Oh, and uh, I mean, you, you look at uh, like Jira and, you know, Jira these days, uh, you know, software project management, you know, systems. I right? they, they don't, it's not like in the olden days where, you know, task, 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 throw everything over the waterfall and, and hope that it works. Instead, these days it's change integration, change integration, so that like you're always moving forward by actually moving forward, which keeps the project actually increases the nov no novelty of the project, which you know it keeps everybody you know more engaged. Um, you know, and then you do stand ups every morning so that you know you spent 30 seconds talking about what it is you're going to do that day and what happened yesterday and if you're blocked on anything. Doing a check-in is really important. And when you work by yourself, do a check-in. No, you do it in front of a mirror like it, that, or whatever. Just, yeah, do it. Um, another thing is, um, if you, before you go to sleep, before you get away, walk away from your desk... If you have a list of things to do and you say, tomorrow morning, tomorrow, I'm going to achieve these things, most likely you will, or you will at least achieve several of those things. But um, doing the that in front of a mirror, I love it. That's a really great idea. Thank you. Did you want to add anything else? Because you're on a roll right now. Yeah, no, and I, I think when, when, when you are doing that uh, just for yourself, you are, you, you're essentially, you're, it's a moment where you're actually like doing some magic and and you know placing your will on your future self and 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 giving it power to to, to work uh, and it should not be you know discounted how powerful that can be. Yeah, and what you just said was actually really important, really important magically as well, is to put the power of will onto your future self. Dude, that's fantastic. That's what I do. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, Razzy, go. I think for, for me, two of the biggest um, taking something from day job slash the rest of life into, into music uh, features were um, I had this, this, this moment in, I don't know, 2003 where 
I had realized my tasks were way ahead of me. And I took a very large notepad, the conference room notepad, and I started filling it in with the uh, mind map style, here's all my tasks, and it was flat hierarchy, just one layer of everything that I could possibly think of that was kind of getting away from me. And, you know, it was like, it wasn't a healthy exercise by any stretch, and, and I found even more stress from, from having charted it out like that and realizing the impossibility of the task. But a few years later, I, I ran into the... Um, David Allen book, Getting Things Done, and in a cultish type fashion, um, a lot of the principles in that worked for me. It was the um, getting rid of all other inboxes except for your one inbox, filtering stuff into categories with verbs that are actions instead of just concepts that might be able to get done, but the difference between album work versus record three tracks for the bass, do takes, erase <laughs> previous specifics like that, um, differences like that. But it never fully carried over into creative work because of the one missing feature of external accountability. And I know that's been a little bit of a drumbeat so far where uh, a person who's paying me for my time gets an unfortunate, and I think this is very common, an unfortunate priority over my own um, plans and, and, and ideas for what is the most important thing to do. And part of that is a scarcity mindset. Part of it is a um, easy, easy to please, you know, get some positive uh, vibes and feedback from having completed the task and, and the paycheck. But I think I think that distinction is, is one of the, the, the most stark there is the external expectations and accountability versus the internal motivation and accountability gap for me. And um, one of the other, the second uh, feature that was most formative is working with the groups at Harmonix of the, uh, the Rock Band Network contributors who were... Um, you know, like Ivan alludes to, the gaming and software development world are set up for people who are all over the place, and it is encouragement and teamwork and a common goal toward making a game fun. And in this case, it was uh, musicians working on their own songs to chart them and do the effects and uh, gameplay and wanting players at the play test to have a great experience and everybody criticizing each other for a you know, positive outcome for a third uh, you know, an external goal, again, was a real motivating thing. Worked well, it carried over, it was very successful. So those two. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there because that's enough of a chunk of, of, of things. But I do have some other stuff I wanted to talk about, about spreadsheets, Carl, about your stuff, but please. Thank you. Thank you very much. And really quickly, I just say, uh, Randall put in the comments, I think that was Randall, um, uh, a really wonderful piece of advice is move with a false sense. Uh, false motivation is better than no motivation and move with a sense of purpose. Um, and it's funny that you mentioned from your army days because I, am, I try and run me like I am a drill sergeant. And I come across as a drill sergeant and I'm not sorry, um, but I need to run me like a drill sergeant. Because I am a fucking space cake. Um, Alex. Nothing really work-related, but for people who have trouble with going back and just changing things, uh, committing things is a really uh, good thing. Like printing your synthesizers to audio, and then maybe plugging out the patch cables, and uh, then... Um, maybe printing the effects just concentrating on mixing is something that like many people swear by and i think if i would find myself um, going back too much i would do that and it's also better for archiving because you don't know uh, maybe the license of that one soft synth won't load for some reason in the new operating system but if it's audio it's a wave file you always have it so yeah that's basically it awesome Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Um, Ivan. 
Yeah, the uh, project management style is uh, in the tech industry. Agile is is what everybody's using, and you know, again, it is really built to make it very easy to herd the cats, or make it possible to herd the cats. I'm, it's never easy. What was I thinking? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> like easy. we're going into spreadsheets now. Okay. So. You know, if you guys want to want to expand on this, because I'm getting a lot out of this, so so please, the floor is open. Um, Agile does have a lot of overhead to it, and it requires almost a project manager to make it happen for a lot of people. But the concepts of accountability and meeting and talking about things and iterative project development and things not being quite so linear, but still working out in a generally linear direction and having people with strong ideas contribute those strong ideas frequently. And yeah, it's, it is a great concept. And I've, I've, I think, um, I think there's certain parts of it that apply to making music quite nicely. There's whole big swaths of it that mean nothing to us. Uh, but the parts that apply are going to apply a lot. And like, I think um, scrum is not going to happen between me and my cat. We don't, we don't no, need to get you, together. And <laughs> you, but you, you can do it with just yourself. Yeah. And I think that there's, there's actually a great deal of value to be found there. Um, Carl, the thing that I wanted to ask you about the spreadsheets, and this might easily be construed as a, a joke or snarky, but you've contributed several spreadsheets that I look at and I'm like, oh, this is it. This is so, it's done for me. I don't even need to type this anymore. I'm so psyched. Thank you. But now I've got like four of them and I don't know quite which one. I think you might have answered this with your signs on the wall, but do you have a meta context for keeping track of what's in which spreadsheet or is that just habits and natural or do you have a system above the um, the documents? Can you ask me that again? Yeah, sure. Um, do you know what's in every spreadsheet and do you know what things to attend to with which list of tasks open? Like, does that come naturally to you or do you have a master plan that... Ah tells you which spreadsheet to open at which time of day. Wow, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, uh, no, they're just there. Um, and I know that um, when I am writing a track, the, the one that I put live today, the creative management one, that one is what I'm working on. And I will open it before I start. Like the night beforehand, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna work on my new track, blah, 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 tomorrow. And then tomorrow I know what I'm doing. Make my coffee do the thing. Step one, open Excel sheet. Even before I open Cubase and look at the track. Step two, open Cubase, listen to the track, get busy. And then off you go. See you in a few hours. Um, towards the end of the process of, of writing a track, then there's the... Um, spreadsheet, spreadsheet that's got all the ISRC numbers and the blah, 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 that one comes up. Um, then there is the, um, um, then there is the release your goddamn CD. That one comes up. And I got to tell you, um, I've got that, uh, another version of that also online. Um, but I've, I, I, I recently, for this album I'm working on now, I changed the whole thing. Only because it's going to suit me and only because um, there's um, uh, delays with merchandising. There's all of these fucking delays going on right now. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so that happened. Um, uh, uh, the ability to use Excel or, or Google Spreadsheets or whatever you're using is really important. And to be able to say, well, I'm going to make this cell here, which is a date automatically reflect that one up there but add two weeks you've got to have that skill and it's just equals some brackets blah plus blah um i, I noticed your um vertical text innovation on that last one that you sent mm. yeah that's good thanks um and um and then, um, and then it's really interesting that I also got into uh, programming um, databases with um, Microsoft fucking Access. 
Um, and I learned so much. I, I have like the whole, my whole shopping system and everything's on that now as well. Um, uh, luckily I do, my, my brain is also very mathematical and structurally inclined. Um, but, uh, so, and you know, man, it's really interesting that I, to, to spend time working on a spreadsheet or a managerial thing like this is time well spent. Like it's not a waste of time. You're not fucking around or anything because like with this, um, spreadsheet I just did for the, for the release of the bastard gods. Um, I, uh, I got a rude shock. Um, I, I, I actually have more time than I thought I had. Um, but it's, it's funny. Even Kickstarter came back and said, oh, we don't like the bastard gods. <laughs> it's like, you're fucking joking me, man. So, um, I had time, um, okay, I'm going to say this and, and don't fucking guilt trip me on this. I'm going to China for, for manufacturing merchandise. Um, because places in the US aren't printing the bastard gods. Um, and I, the, 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 yeah. Um, and there's another thing I want to do as well. Wow, should I mute my microphone for this? There's a, a little piece, there's a thing you can put on your PC that is an open, it's a thing you stick over your, the, the, the camera, and it opens, it slides it open and closed. And either I was going to have Angel Spit the Bastard Gods, or I was going to call that a Snowden cocktail. Um, and when I was asking my, my manufacturer in the US, they said, oh, we, we can't print that. So I had to find their manufacturer in China. And China went, yeah, sure, we'll print that. And it's like, what the fuck? Um, anyway, so even that I just said his name, I'm going to get in trouble for that. Um, anyway, uh, so, sorry, I, di I digress. Um, so yeah, so because I'm dealing with China, I have to now add time in. And, you know, when you buy merch, it's getting printed in the US, it's getting printed in China anyway, and they're just busting it over. For certain things that are being made in the United States, I'm getting it done in the USA. Um, but if they're just wholesaling it on or, or re-engineering it onto me, it's like, fuck you, man, I'm getting this done in China. And I'll write naughty words on it. Um, so uh, I didn't answer your question. at all. Oh yeah. So I, I guess I just I guess I know what's going on and when it's going on. And the other thing I like doing as well is that piece of uh that, that spreadsheet I just put up there, um, it will calculate the percentage that the song is that the entire twelve track album is completed. But the joy of that is that if you're working your butt off, you might get two percent of, of the entire album, two percent a week. Um, yep, 2% a week. For me, it's actually about 1.5% a week, which is why an album takes me 18 months. Um, and if you are grinding that thing, uh, you'll get 1.5% a week in there. Um, and that timetable really sucks because if you realistically, honestly put the numbers in there and you think the song is, oh, it's 80% done, it's like 20% done. Um, you got to be honest. And the, the other thing about that thing is, is that like, if I go, oh, I don't like these lyrics anymore. And I look at that number in the column and the column said, the lyrics are done. It's like, the lyrics are done. Blah. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. Rezzy, your hands up. Um, we keep throwing the words spreadsheet and database around, but, um, is anybody using an actual database front end GUI for desktop? That's not like. I don't know, MySQL or something, uh, big no. Yeah, I'm, I, last one I was using was FileMaker Pro, and uh, I just haven't found a replacement for it. That's I can't settle on one. And I'm busy shopping for an audio interface, let's remember, so I can't shop for. I use Pandas, data frames, and Python, but that was like for automated stuff, and I don't know if that's the, I think it's not good for manual manually, um, Layout. unless you're writing like a front end, I think it's not good for, uh, um, well, I've written my share of 
back ends and front ends in uh, FileMaker back in the late 90s for people, so. <laughs> I use Access, Microsoft Access. Does Access still exist, or do they just have SQL? No, as their I hope product, it still Microsoft. exists, because I'm using it. Um, cool. And if they take it away, I'm fucked. My Kickstarters and everything goes through Access, hmm. um, so that I'll just put in, oh, that person got this thing, and then it'll say, okay, you need this many T-shirts, this many CDs, this many da 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 Business logic. Yeah. The whole lot. It tells me everything I need to know. Because um, I designed it. It's pretty basic. Um, but, and I learned that from the Department of Health working at Translators. Thank you, Translators. Um, and a big hi to Darren, my mate Darren from Sydney, who I, I walked into a fucking club and there's Darren. It's like, Daz, what are you doing, mate? He goes, oh, I'm in fucking LA. And I went, bullshit, mate. He goes, yeah. What the fuck are you doing here? And he goes, oh, I went to see some festivals. And I went, you came all the way from Sydney? Ye old Sydney town to go to fucking festivals? He goes, yeah. And I went, one of them was like 20 minutes from where I live. And I didn't go. And he said something that I can't repeat here. But you're allowed to call each other that in Australia. Um, and that was Dags. Could you see Dags? Alex, and he's, he's going to have a meat pie for me. And I went, fucking yeah, mate. And he's, I've got him hooked on burritos. So I've, I've done my thing. No burritos in Australia, unfortunately. Alex, so hit me with your wisdom. So one of the things that I struggle a bit with is that if I start a project or a track, it feels really good in the beginning and it feels really good in the end. The problem is the middle. Do you have a way to celebrate just the small victories? Yes! Because I don't feel anything in that part. Yes! You have to write down that the track works. Uh -huh. um, and, and what you were talking about is the marathon. This is the marathon. Oh, I'm doing the marathon and I'm excited. Wow, this fucking sucks. <gasps> oh, I finished the marathon. I'm so happy and exhausted. But it's good now. That's the marathon. And it's how it is. Um, and why don't you write on your wall, this is the marathon, it sucks, and it's okay. Because um, you've got to do that fucking marathon. Or I'm gonna, what am I going to do? What am I going to send you in the mail? It's a, it's a poo. That's right. It's going to be a poo in the mail. Razzy, sexy voice, I see your hand. Um, Alex, share that. Find somebody to share it with and share your victories a little bit. Get somebody to play it for. Go out. Go out, yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing. I know all of us are very insulated, lonely people, and it's hard for us to go out. Um, and um, it, it's it, I can't go to a club by myself. It's terrifying. I can't do that. It's like, oh, I don't know anyone here, and uh, get me the fuck out of here right now. Um, meeting people is impossible for me. Uh, so, you know, try and have, if you can, go out. Or, I don't know, treat yourself. Get a burrito. In Germany. Get a euro. Why is it a fucking euro? Uh, Carl, we discussed earlier the banning of pizza on camera because it makes you hungry. Yeah. What is the ruling on sugared breakfast cereal? Um, it's okay. Just turn the, your mic off. <laughs> so I don't want to hear the milk clang with the bowl. Um, and it's going to be okay. It's going to, you, you do that. Oh, yeah, Thanks, no, Vince, Vince, Vince Suddenly Vince, I want right. Lucky Charms. It's, it's all right. Vince, is, Vince knows how it works. And, uh, yeah. Vince is good. I'm normally eating my cabbage. I'm going on this crazy diet where I eat um, lettuce in the morning. And, yeah. Just, is there a punchline to that? No, what, well, that's the reason, like a setup. it's this big chunk of potassium, and it resets your sugar desire level. Because somebody whose name we're not going to mention has a problem with, sh well, specifically chocolate. Not going to say his name, because it's weird when I say my name. It's just weird. Um, but potassium kind of brings me back to the center. And I, if I'm going to have a coffee in the morning, no sugar in the coffee. First coffee, no sugar. It's just black chocolate. Ah, sorry, that just came out. Um, uh Oh, I could have some chocolate right now. Um, hold on. My plan, new plan is to take notes during the writing and recording process. Notes on what doesn't work and um, especially on what does work. That's a good idea. 
He's talking about my chocolate addiction. No, Randall, I am not. I think we share that, though. Um, okay, thank you so much. This has been really positive. Uh, does anybody else have anything they want to throw in at this? Or we could, we, we were talking roughly about uh, setting up your studio space so that you may catch chaos in your hands. But here, but first, here's Alex. Yeah, quick question. Um, oh, there's something else I wanted to say. Keep that idea. Yeah, maybe say you, say your uh, idea, and I just want to finish. What's your idea? So basically, um, what... It, does anybody know how fragile Alpha Juno synthesizers are? I mean, I shouldn't buy any synths right now, but I'm kind of tempted and I'm curious. Okay, thank you. We're going to get back to that in a second. Um, excuse me again. Hurdles. Don't put hurdles on your fucking path. It's a neurodivergent thing. It's like, oh, you, you got this plan, finally. And everything's going for, oh, well, I'm just going to put this thing up. That, oh, I'm not going to do this thing because. Oh, I can't do this thing because. Oh, what happened? No, don't fucking confuse the fucking marathon. It's don't put hurdles up. Because I notice a lot that we put up hurdles. Like when we're talking here and da-da-da, yeah, but I wanted to do this thing. No, just finish the fucking song. Um, that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Alpha Junos. Which one? They're kind of boring, though, man. Why do you <laughs> fucking want an Alpha Juno? Well, I, I think it's the, the most affordable... How much um, are you paying for it? Is it a rack uh, or the, the keyboard? It's a keyboard. How much? 400 huh? about for the one which has no velocity. So, but hold on. Is, that, is it the Juno 2? Which one is that? It's the one. But the, the only difference is the one has the the two has the better keyboard. Okay. And, yeah, four yeah, hundred's okay. Um, I would be seriously looking around as well that you know there are other bits and pieces around for four hundred bucks that have way better MIDI specs that you can probably patch into. That thing doesn't have an arpeggiator, does it? No, but that's like not not a problem. Okay. At least for me. Um, for 400 euros, there are better things around. I think, possibly, like, um, I know, um, it's six-note polyphonic, and they're only, like, one oscillator, aren't they? And the sub. A sub. Does it have a sub? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, and they're only four octaves, so, you know what? Maybe. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe. But there's not a lot you can do with them. Like, can you do filter sweeps and stuff via MIDI? Uh, yes. Wow. But you have to... I think you have to patch the... Aftertouch to your filter and then modulate the aftertouch over MIDI CC. Okay, then you can do it. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, sure. There are better things. I think more <laughs> modern things, I think... Um, but, hey, man, it's such a sweet, cute little synth. Razzy, go. Tell me I'm wrong. No, I wanted to respond to your don't put hurdles in your path on your marathon. Now we've mixed our sports metaphors, I think. Um, I'm not shopping for a multi-channel interface because I plan to concurrently record eight stereo things. It is because you can leave them connected and present at the DAW and without having to decide which things are going on your two bus or which things are going um, from your patch bay into your active channels. They're just there. You can play the piano and reliably it's connected. You can walk up to the mic and reliably it's on channel one and you can have your nicely set um, template document that launches with your DAW every time and things are there where you expect them. And it's not a magical solution, but it is effectively magic that you can quickly boot a modern computer to DAW and have all of your audio sources present at um, at the ready for hitting record on, uh, or even just playing, since the computer is effectively the mixer in these uh, cases. Um, they'll be ready just to, to hear, even. Thank you. Um, Alex, I saw your hand up partly. Yeah, I was going to say, if you don't have a... Um... Um, audio interface with more inputs, you can also get a patch bay, but then Raziel said just that. 
because a patch bay is much better than pl unplugging it directly in your mixer or audio interface because it's way cleaner and it's way faster. Yeah, and they're normal and all that shit. Raz, go. That that's actually some people don't talk about that quite as much or we haven't talked about keeping a well-organized patch bay but it's an extra you know a few hundred bucks worth of cables and the the equipment itself but um man having a a, a, a patch bay chart to, to refer back to or having it well labeled um really i don't know if it, it sets you up to be ready to do more stuff but i mean i've certainly got more patch points and and um, inputs than I have actual nor normal to um, receive USB channels and setting up a clearly well thought out layout for all of your stuff rather than keeping in a closet doesn't necessarily have to be powered on all the time it doesn't necessarily you know if it's a, a battery operated pedal but even just having all of your stuff out of the closet and boxes and onto your table and plugged into a patch bay so you can do a telephone operator style quick thing or tape op second engineer type you know i need all of um the vocal bussing to the lexicon and back into 1718 and you know like getting your head around how you might work and anticipating what things you might want to be connected one day just having them out at the ready and on patch points in your patch bay to plug into the few precious inputs that you do have almost 99% as good as having them all there all the time. Really good for workflow. Yeah, um, I second that. Having a good patch bay is bloody awesome. And also, if you are... If you are modular inclined, trying to have as much stuff in your studio as possible being patched at your modular as if it is a modular synthesizer. Um, and if you couldn't be bothered... Uh, 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 making these yourself. I made mine myself. I'm sort of kind of regretting that a little bit. Um, there's a company called Mesotron, and they do um, uh, a quarter inch input at the back, and it's got an eighth inch input at, uh, at the front. So you, it goes in quarter, and, and it comes out eight. So you can just patch shit in, and that's really fucking handy. And my studio is kind of eighth inch because everything's eight, eight inch, um, but. You know, even if your keyboard has a trig input or an expression pedal input, remember, yeah, a lot of those expression pedals are control voltages. They're um, 0 to plus 10. Don't go negatives. They're plus 10, so don't put an LFO through it. Um, the Emacs's and, and so much, like all of my synths have an expression pedal input. And you can route that control voltage coming off your modular to drive it um, you, you can get that stuff to drive everything. Um, so I say do that. Um, but having a patch bay, yeah. I also try and have um, stuff set up to be uh, doorless. Like every now and then I might just go, like I've got a preset on my um, bloody um, Motu MIDI thing. God, one day we need to have a conversation about MIDI fucking madness. Um, uh, because mine's a mess. MIDI madness is a mess. Um, the, uh, uh, and it's basically no door. And it's just K2000 talks to everything as the master keyboard. Um, which, and that's, is sometimes problematic because like, for example, the Rev 2 is, I've got it running USB and I don't have it running MIDI. So I've got to figure that one out. But I can always drive um, uh, just trigger inputs into it. Raz, go. Um, don't normal your plus 48V phantom lines and your control voltage lines into your mic, please. A very good, very good I, I, I don't know how I'd know that, but... Yeah, yeah, and the smell of smoke. And also with MIDI, um, a really good thing to buy with MIDI are knee pads. Because you're going to spend so much time crawling around behind your stuff. Get knee pads. I'm serious. You can get them for like 10 bucks. Um, ripping your fucking hair out. Going, why isn't this shit working today? Alex. Uh, I just wanted to say there are media interfaces nowadays that can accept USB. 
for example this one. Cool. And my MIDI keyboard is just plugged in with one USB lead and also powered by it, so it's uh, way cleaner and it's uh, one cable instead of three. I love that. How many um, how many uh, USB in and outs does it have? I think four, but I'm not sure. I need to check. That's great. Fuck, I love that. Um, yeah. Oh boy, I need to update. Yeah, because like you know, like I was saying, if if you have the ability to, you know, set up a great big jam and go into jam land for a few hours. It's it's four USB A. So host ports and one USB B um, to computer port. That's great. But there's also a bigger version of this. Wow, that's awesome. That's very awesome. Yeah, I've got a um, I've got a Motu eight in eight out thing, and I also have a uh, Korg. Yeah, I know it's fucking awesome. I also have a Korg, um, a really old MIDI switcher. Actually, there's a Kawaii Mav. Eight, I think it's called. It's the one you want, because it's got four in, eight out, and there's sliders. It's the best MIDI through box ever. Um, and you just change the sliders, because the Korg's four in, six out. So, or is it six in, six out? I think it's six in, six out. Um, and it's got knobs, so it's all like knobs and shit. So if you want to change shit quickly, you can. Um, but it's great having. Oh my god, fucking MIDI. Go, Razzie. I, I, I guess you have me, me beat there. I was going to tout the JL Cooper MSB Plus with its uh, 8x8 presets, send it a program change to load a new routing patch. Still on the rack. I haven't seen it lit up in 15 years. Wow. I hope one day to turn that thing on and just look at all those LEDs on the front. Yeah, it's uh, they're great. Um, but the knobs and switches is a cool thing that you're talking about on the the, the hardware switched ones rather than the software configured ones. Yeah, and if the um these Mavs, the Kawaii Mavs, they go for like hundred bucks if you can find one, and they're great. They're really, really, really good because MIDI through man, it's quite a pain in the bum. But Alex is onto something with the like the USB. You can effectively have as many. MIDI dedicated 16 channel IO MIDI boxes as you can collect and those things are dirt cheap too I've still got several sitting around and anytime I need to add a device and I don't even want to know what channel it is or remember how to channelize its input and output control just stick on an extra DIN 5 to USB MIDI you know IO box and it's got its own presence in the software immediately awesome um, thank you, man. Alex. Yeah, but don't try to MIDI road via your computer. That's a bad idea. Bad Come thing. on. That's what computers are for. This, this, this thing is super fast with USB, but I, I tried a MIDI matrix uh, in software, and I only realized how bad it was when I switched to this because I had like so many weirdness, and it sounds much tighter with this. Like, uh, I think MIDI runs at 150 signals per second 150 baud it's ridiculously well, slow it doesn't take it you can fit a lot of midis into one usb but hey you're it's sloppy yeah. for sure midi is sloppy and it doesn't have a lot of time temporal resolution maybe it's this freeware software i use but it was not maybe this one is just con consistently slow but i don't know the device you're, is it one of those i device uh, is a company i midi it's i connectivity my I connectivity yeah yeah those look neat i haven't seen one but that sounds like a cool yeah you can also switch to routing with free presets on on, on the touch thing like if you i want to have a dollar setup i just push a button or push a soft button and i have like everything routed the way i want and if i want to be uh, just Connected to my door, I just press the no connections button and then turns back to. Yeah, I, I reckon we need to have a deep dive into MIDI because it's such a terrifying pain in the ass. Um, I, I was lecturing in how to use MIDI in the early '90s at university. I consider myself somebody who knows a lot about MIDI, um, and I still go, I am so confused. 
I have no idea what's going on, and this is fucking fucking with my head. And another really good one is the Roland, uh, Roland A88. Because it's just a bunch of... It's great. It's it's a MIDI processor, but it's not. It's really a glorified MIDI through box. And you push that button, and you tell it that this in is talking to these outs. Um, super simple, and it also merges. It's great. Um, I... Uh, even with all of this fucking experience I have, I still just go, why the fuck isn't it working today? Like, what is... Because with every machine and with every point of connectivity, there's something that can go wrong. And, um, like, when I'm writing, it's I'm just on one synthesizer and a notepad. There's no MIDI. There is no nothing. There is nothing to fucking psych me out and getting me out of the writing mode. Um, and... Oh, dear God. Sorry, that was a downer. Um, does any... Uh, Alex, your hand is still up. I'm, I'm thinking, uh, unless anybody else wants to talk about something mind-blowingly awesome, we could raid on over to MTV TV. I see a hand. Um, Ivan, at the beginning of our meeting, mentioned the, uh, the new... Um Ableton push. push three, which I don't necessarily want to talk about that, but since we brought up MIDI and it's going to carry over into next time we talk, MPE, the extensions of MIDI um, performance uh, extensions, whatever it stands for, expression. Um, there's some cool stuff happening there that I haven't messed with that I'd love to see if anybody's you know, using that and what some of the... Um, things you can do are slide and individual node expression stuff so i think i think it's happening for people who haven't yet bought a uh, seaboard rise or spent thousands of dollars on a really uh, nice uh, mpe thing there's ways of doing it on and just drawing in the expression um controls and stuff on the uh, piano scroll so yeah this is a really i, I uh, we should try and remember this because um Using MIDI as a, there's so much, like even in performance, I don't use MIDI, like like my performance MIDI is, is like zilch, a couple of wheels here and there. Um, I do a heap of stuff on CV, but I don't know, this is a great conversation to be having and I, I would love to be having it. Hmm. Like controllers and all that shit, I don't do it. Alex. So I tried uh, one of the rolly things in a store and I thought it was horrible. It sounded like really rubbery and I couldn't get anything out of it. Um, I hope this one is better. And I think the most complex MIDI stuff I had just with iPad apps, which had like X, Y pads for each note. And that counts, it can sound really great. So. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Diana, we're gonna raid. And I want to thank everybody for being a part of this. And just a little reminder, Angel Spit's Kickstarter is happening right now. Um, and I want to thank everybody who supported it. I'm really excited about it. It's really fucking heavy. Right now, we are going to go over to... Actually, before we do, a reminder, this time next week, we will be here as always. God damn it, here it is. Art of Rock is just bloody spectacularly fantastic um jump on that shit uh and right now we are zooming over raiding over to the amazing illustrious mtv tv oops something went wrong loading i hate you go away um you rock hold on i'm just gonna start the raid and diana if you could raid as well that would be great wow are we still even live boom uh that would be great MTV TV, let's go. You rock. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.